Rain threat sharply increasing in the Indian Ocean from two potential tropical cyclones. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical weather bulletin for May the 6th. The tropics remain without an active system, but still plenty of things to talk about, particularly in the Indian Ocean, where that massive mess of clouds will develop into one or more tropical cyclones on either side of the equator. Code yellow right now for the Bay of Bengal, we are getting increasingly concerned, at least for rainfall, if not winds as well. 26 days until Atlantic hurricane season begins and it looks like this right now with a big frontal system moving on through the Atlantic but the rest of the uh, uh, region looks fairly quiet. A few storms across the United States. This is what the uh, Western Pacific looks like. You can see one or two little uh, systems there. Uh, still that one near Palawan in the Philippines as well and that other one near Micronesia. Some convection north of the Australian top end and those two tropical systems that we're currently monitoring. 40% for the Bay of Bengal system as it continues eastwards. Uh, the trend is continuing eastwards actually and it could reside completely in the Andaman Sea now. And a 20% system further south on the southern side uh, the southwest Indian Ocean side there uh, which could develop not far from Indonesia so the coast of Sumatra certainly could get some strong winds but it looks like rainfall is really going to be a uh, bad situation for that whole western coast of Sumatra with both of these systems um, congregating in that area for a little bit satellite imagery in the last 24 hours has looked like this the rain across India that we saw yesterday continuing further eastwards now with a few red spots showing very high rain rates uh, further east mainly over the open ocean and a few spots over the uh uh, Papua New Guinea Indonesia region as well. Here's the latest satellite imagery over that area and you can see just what's happening right now and in the last uh, few hours I think it's becoming a little bit more apparent that southern system but nonetheless moving over to the western Pacific those two systems that we're currently looking at there as well uh, but we don't have them marked anymore they are still invested uh, by the uh, JTWC uh, but we don't have them actually on chances anymore. Just a quick look at the infrared view of that as well and you can see that system too, uh, that double system on either side of the equator in the Indian Ocean. Uh, still got a long way to go for organising uh, but certainly something to keep us on our toes. Here's that Western Pacific system again there, you can see over the southern part of Palawan uh, with that convection blowing up on those latest frames still for the southern part of the island they'll be getting quite a bit more rainfall uh, but certainly we're not looking at anything forming. Uh, just a quick note here, an uh, interesting looking cyclonic feature crossing South Korea right now as well, delivering six substantial amounts of rainfall, obviously not tropical. Sea surface temperatures then look like this, the Eastern Pacific continuing on that warm pace that it's currently setting right now, with temperatures up and above possibly 30 degrees along a few areas near the coast of Mexico. The Atlantic looking decent, the loop current really getting in there with those warm sea surface temperatures in the Gulf and the Gulf Stream as well off the US East Coast really starting to rev up. Indian Ocean really warm there, I'm not sure what colour that is right at the centre, whether it's warmer or cooler than the surrounding 32 degrees Celsius waters, but nonetheless it's extremely warm over there in the Bay of Bengal. Southwest Indian Ocean receding still, as you would expect here for the time of year, just one little area of 30 degrees holding on the northern coast of uh, Madagascar. Australian region as well has been really struggling to hold on to those 30 degrees Celsius waters, maybe just one or two little slithers there near Darwin, but elsewhere it is really cooling down, particularly in the Gulf of Carpentaria, a little bit surprising to see that, the oceanic heat content is already gone there. And in the South Pacific, those sea surface temperatures still looking okay for a few areas, but the conditions really starting to turn against tropical cyclone formation now, as we're well into the late season beyond that even. Western Pacific very warm though as well, South China Sea particularly really a hit right now and the Gulf of Thailand absolutely steaming heading up and above 32 degrees Celsius there. And here's the oceanic 
uh, sorry, the sea surface temperature anomalies a little bit above average in the Western Pacific, all told. The Eastern Pacific well above average in the equatorial region, that El Nino looks like it's starting up, but not much difference from what we were looking at on yesterday's bulletin. The Eastern Atlantic extremely warm, of course that's not really a tropical cyclone area, but interesting to see what ramifications that might have. Southern Indian, uh, South Pacific, I should say, for the oceanic heat content, as you can see, starting to degrade further, uh, but still decent amounts in those low latitudes. Western Pacific hasn't changed very much, looking good. South China Sea also catching up. Eastern Pacific still has that significant area there in the open waters that is well above what we were looking at in the peak season of last year. Let's check the GFS computer model then for the next five days and let's watch closely here what happens as this big wind burst proceeds towards the coast of Indonesia, ramming all of that wind and rain up towards the coast and out of it spawns potentially two cyclones. That southern system there becoming rather strong, uh, potentially getting towards category two status there by the looks of things, but other models aren't really on board still, so 20%. The other system, of course, Andaman Sea, moving northwards and strengthening quite a lot in the Andaman Sea there east of the Andaman Islands towards the end of that five day period this is the seven day rainfall outlook 40% by the way for the Bay of Bengal system because other models still aren't really on board with it it has to be said but regardless of development look at all of this rainfall that occurs along the coast of Indonesia and moving further north all the way up to the southern tip of Bangladesh uh, sorry not Bangladesh Myanmar in the next seven days these are the rainfall amounts we could be expecting up to 26 inches there for parts of Indonesia that is over uh, 500 600 millimeters actually and for the southern part of Myanmar there getting up towards 16 inches that's 40 uh, 400 millimeters and 12 inches 300 millimeters on the Andaman Islands as well so really looking at potentially very very high amounts of rainfall even for the area Longer range day 5 to 10, this is where the crunch happens with that storm really ramping up in intensity, GFS still supporting it very much, other models not really on board and calling for a landfall there not far uh, to the west of Yangon as a very powerful storm, probably a moderate category 4 on this latest run, so weaker than it was saying last night, but of course the track has moved further east. If it does continue moving east though, it will run out of room, so it'll be interesting to see what happens there. That's the important stuff done. You can scan the barcode and take a look at the Force 13 merch store. We have our usual items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on your request. And are still waiting for a Hone t-shirt. You may remember in last night's update, I teased a little look at a potential Hone in the, the Central Pacific five days. It's still there, but much, much weaker and not a tropical cyclone. Well, we just thought we'd look at the Atlantic for the long range. Maybe one or two half chances of getting a tropical cyclone there in the open Atlantic uh, towards the middle to later part of May. Uh, first that one that was further out to sea, but also look near the east coast of Florida, Bahamas there, possibly a quick spin-up system, but those two systems are way out there in terms of time, so I wouldn't put any faith into that yet, even on the National Hurricane Center's new seven-day outlooks, which they've upgraded from five days. That's what they're doing this year, and so are we. You can talk about all of that on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13 for tropical weather and general weather chat with over 3,000 weather watchers from around the world. Well then, on May 6, 2009, the Western Pacific was well and truly open for business. We had a Typhoon Kajira, which was coming off its Category 4 peak, was still a strong Category 3 at this point, and Chan Hom was revving up in the South China Sea, a fantastic looking system there, moving northeastwards towards the Philippines, where it would make landfall uh, after peaking, I think, as a Category 2 storm before it reached there, an unusual and... Uh, quite difficult storm that made landfall on the western coast of Luzon. Funny to think that that is 14 years ago now. Looking back at this year then, the first name on the Atlantic naming list upcoming is Arlene. In the eastern Pacific it's Adrian and in the central Pacific it is still Hone. Feels like that's been on the waiting list since 2009 doesn't it? 
In the Western Pacific, the next name is Mawa, the North Indian Ocean, we're still calling upon Mocha, it looks like it's almost time, but will it happen? Are all still very confused, we'll have more updates on that, no doubt. And in the Southern Hemisphere, further storms if they do happen, the next in the Australian region, Jasper, Southwest Indian Ocean, Fabienne, and the South Pacific, Lola. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin, we'll be back again tomorrow night.